Hello and welcome to Straight to the Point. I'm your host, William J. Gibbs, Jr., and I have here Larry Martinez, the Executive Director of the Alice Jim Wells Economic Development Corporation. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Will. Appreciate it. Nice being here. Now, I understand you've got some exciting things going on there in Alice. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Well, Will, we're working on a lot of things. I've, I've been at the job probably for about two months. We're just starting off um, with different plans, different things that we're working on. We're really excited because Alice is a small town with big values and everybody knows everybody. We feel real comfortable that we're, we're able to participate and try to create that, that cynicism or that, that buzz to where we're working together and we want to create things to bring industry jobs and to make sure that Alice, everybody knows where Alice is. Now, what are some of Alice's current strengths? Our strengths are that we're a regional, a regional area. We sit between two major corridor, highway corridors, which is 281 uh, right through the center, or right off the side of Alice, and Highway 44. Highway 281 goes all the way from Mexico all the way into Canada. Highway 44 goes from Laredo all the way to Corpus Christi. We have two major ports on both sides, one in Limport with Laredo, and then, of course, Corpus Christi, with their major port where things are really happening here. So it's kind of a crossroads city. Absolutely. We've been known as the hub city of South Texas for years and years. And we're hoping to capitalize on that. We think that there's an opportunity that we can capitalize to become a regional hub for whether it be a distribution center, whether it be some type of facility that people can bring their goods to and we can transport to other parts of the country. And what are some of Alice's current economic strong suits? Well, we have a good workforce. We have a, a workforce that's primarily specialized in oil field. Oil field has been one of the biggest things that Alice has had over the past 30, 40 years. We feel that there's opportunity with our workforce and the individuals that we have there to be able to transition and other types of work as well. Uh, if People that have been in this area, in the South Texas area, know that sometimes the oil industry can get pretty volatile. You have some really good points where you're doing really well, and then all of a sudden, everything kind of falls out. It can get fickle. It can get very fickle. And it, and it all depends on what happens in different parts of the country. We have no control over that. And let me give you an example. If the price of oil goes down in the Middle East, that affects us. If a plant goes down where they're not producing enough oil or gas, that affects us. So uh, that's a hard industry to be in. We've loved the fact, though, that we've been able to keep people working. That's really developed Alice into what it is today. But we're looking at it from a different standpoint. We're looking at it from we need to diversify Alice and maybe go into something that is not as fickle and something that's a little bit more dependent that we can kind of hang our hats on. What are some of your homegrown industries? We have, the biggest industry we have are some of the, what we call Endyne. It's a large company that supplies different parts to different countries, to different parts of the world, countries. Uh, in the industry, of, well, oil field related, right? Different types of compressors, different types of machinery, things of that nature, right? Uh, that is probably some of the strong things that we have in our community. Now, you've got a pretty booming retail sector along 281, right? That's correct. That's correct. Yeah, the retail industry has been always strong. People got to eat. You know, people want places to go to. Our, our Highway 44 is, is a pretty busy area in, in downtown Dallas. So we're real pleased with that. Now, what are some of the weaknesses that you and your board are going to try and help build upon? Well, Right now, we're trying to develop a strategic plan on what is it that that we can capitalize on to see what it what we can bring. So we realize that we're not going to go try to get an Amazon because that's a difficult thing. It's going to cost you a lot of money to bring an Amazon. I'd love to have Amazon. Those type of industries are really great. But what we're looking at right now is a lot from the medical sector. We recently got. Uh, an a, a company into town that that has about a 1.7 million dollar payroll, and it's in the in the medical industry where 
we feel that because of our locality and where we're at, that we could provide maybe a regional training center to be able to expand and to transition some of our workforce into that area. We have a lot of employees that are, are wanting to maybe graduate or transition into that. So we're, we're trying to come up with a plan on how do we get our workforce to be able to go into the different fields that apply for South Texas. And when we look at what we do for OWLS, we look at a region. You know, we have a strong economy in Corpus Christi. You look at some of the things that are going on in the San Pat area and some of the monies that are available there. We see that as opportunities, Will. We see that as a place to be where if we train our people and what they need in that specific skill set, we think that we can we can capitalize on that and provide a different resource for not only Alice, Texas, but for for some of the region of South Texas as well. So tell me, you call yourself the Alice Jim Wells Economic Development Corporation. What is the picture looking like for Jim Wells County? How are they doing? Jim Wells County is is holding their own. We're not in a position right now where we're saying that we have industry and companies moving in here because that's not where we're at, and I'll be quite honest with everybody. We have areas that are south of Alice, which includes Premont. That's a town probably of about four or 5,000. Towards the west of us, we have a smaller city called San Diego. San Diego is probably about four or 5,000. There's employees and people that are able to work and contribute towards that economic upturn that we're looking for. So they're more or less the workers, that's where they live. I would say that a lot of them uh, live in those areas as well. Alice, Orange Grove is, is also part of Jim Wells County. So we, we see an opportunity where we, we have people that can come in from those areas to work in our region or in our area, whether it be Alice or Jim Wells County. Now what about being a ready workforce? Um, I know that part of an EDC's job is educating and making a ready workforce. Mm -hmm. Uh, what's the situation look like for that? Well, there's a lot of talk about us setting up a regional training center. What we're seeing in, uh, in Corpus Christi and other areas, not only in the South Texas region, but in other areas, we're seeing that a lot of kids that are in high school, that are coming out of school, want to develop that particular skill set. Uh, there are some kids that might not be or want to participate in a four-year college plan. We want to be able to give them resources, and not only the youngsters in, in our community, but some of the adults, to transition their training skills to fit that particular skill set. Let's say that uh, the Exxon company is coming into, that is coming into St. Pat. Let's say that they need someone to be able to be a specialist and how they set up that, that particular, era, that whatever job related issue that is. We feel that if we develop our training center and that we can partner up with, with the Exxons or with the Chinese or whoever it might be, we believe that we can train that employee to be able to say, I got the skills I need, I can go apply for that job, and I can still live in Alice because the community distance isn't that far. We feel pretty good that our our rates in our homes in Alice are competitive, that people that have lived there for a long period of time that are set there can still live in Alice, but commute to work and come back and enjoy the quality of life that we have with, with our school systems, with the fact that you know everybody in, in our community. That's a big plus for, for, for a smaller city. And, and knowing everybody and not leaving home, that's something that unfortunately a lot of younger workers millennials grapple with that's correct yes they feel as though they have to leave home in order to get those big wages that's correct that's correct when when we discuss the issues with millennials it's funny that you bring that up because that's an issue we want to address and find out what is it that they're thinking and what is it that we need to do for them to stay there so uh, that's part of our strategic plan of getting information, getting data, finding out what it is and why it is that people leave, why people stay. So there's a lot of work to be done 
on what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. But the only way we're going to do that is through education, through training, and through data. So you as the executive director, 20 years from now, city of Alex, Texas, Jim Wells County, what is your vision? What mark do you want to leave? Uh, well, I, I want to leave, you always want to leave something better than what it was. I think that if our planning is right, I think that if we think of not what's going to happen tomorrow, but what's going to happen the 10 to 20 years from now, we think that it's important that we provide that, that training, that education to our leaders of tomorrow. So in anything that you do, uh, whatever business that you have, you have to have the, the foresight to be able to look the 20 years ahead and say, this is what these individuals did then, this is what they provided, and this is what, what transpired out of it. So we have to be very strategic and we have to understand that it's not a short range plan, it's a long range plan. And I think with the leaders that we have, I've, I've been very pleased with our mayor, with our county judge, and all of our elected officials, where we're coming together and understanding that. We're seeing that it's not just one individual that puts us together. It's a group and a team that make it what it is. So uh, we're developing our team. We're, we're visiting, we're constantly understanding, looking at information that's coming in and working with it. But like you said, 20 years from now, what do we want those results to be? So I, I think we're in a great position to be able to do that uh, because of the people that are involved, because of the community and how, how close-knit we are. And when three or four years ago, we took a real big hit with jobs in Dallas, Texas. Our oil economy was doing good, like we, like we talked a little bit earlier. Yeah. Uh, you know, everybody's got jobs, we're all making six figures, everybody's buying homes, and all of a sudden the bottom fell out from one day to the next, so to speak. We don't want to be in that position anymore. We want to be able to understand and show that our workforce is different, our workforce is diversified. I'm not saying that I don't want Oilfield, I think Oilfield is great. Right. Uh, uh, they've provided with us with a lot, of, a lot of really good benefits and it's helped a lot of people along the way that that, that we're thankful and grateful for. But we know we need to move on. We know we need to do something different. So what kind of conversations have you and your board been having for life after the Eagle Ford? Basically, like we've been talking a little while ago, what can we do to bring something different that we can look at for 20 years from now on how we changed our mindset, how we changed our philosophy of what Owl should be in the future. So I'm pretty excited about it because it's something that we've that we're tackling with, something that we're 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 seeing from a different perspective. And I'm optimistic that the people in the community are looking at that as well. So tell me about the Jim Wells the Alice Jim Wells EDC. First off, how is it funded? It was funded through the city and through the county. Uh, those funds that are coming in were used to supplement the, the EDC as we speak today. We have not used any of those monies here recently within the last two or three years. Uh, the position has been dormant for about a year and a half. When I came on, um, that position wasn't filled. So uh, right now, the funding that comes in is basically from the county and the city. Over the last year and a half or two years, we've not taken any money from them as all, at all. But we do want to look at different ways of how we attract that revenue. We think that there's opportunities with uh, different types of companies, whether it be through an engineering firm, whether it be through utilities that will contribute to our fund to help expand growth, whether it be through the housing industry, whether it be through uh, many types of growth areas that we feel beneficial for, for Alice Jim Wells County. So do you benefit from sales tax or no? Uh, sales tax that comes into the city and to the county 
is in their budget. Okay. They allocate monies from their budget into that. The county is the one that's been participating more. Uh, the city provides us with office space in City Hall. They provide us indirectly with different types of resources to help get information that we need to disseminate to attract a new company. So uh, we have some in-kind and we have some actual monies that come in through the county level. Does the EDC have a website or a way that people can find out more? We are actually currently working, now that you bring that up, we're actually currently bringing up our website. There was no website up until about two months ago. Oh, wow. We have a preliminary website that we're actually working on. We're uh, getting with two different companies to try to bring our website up to where we need to. Are you ready to release that address or not yet? Not quite yet. Not quite yet. Okay. But I do have an email address that's Larry Martinez at jwcedc.org. Uh, Larry Martinez at jwcedc.org. That's correct. Okay. Larry, thank you for coming by. Thank you, Will, for and having me. telling me about Jim Wells and Alice. Sounds like you guys are making some moves. We're making some moves. We'd like to invite anybody that would like to come out and take a look at us. Take a look at the opportunities. We have land available. We have a railroad that goes right through our town that, that's beneficial when, for transportation needs. So uh, give me a holler. Come by the office at City Hall. Let's visit, and we can help you. We'd be more than glad to do it. Thank you. Thank you, sir.